In this lesson, we're going to cover how to place in a revision table and revision tags. The file that I have open is arborpress.idw. It can be found in your Chapter 6 exercise folder or open up any drawing file that you happen to have. First thing I'm going to do is change over to the annotation panel and I'm going to move my tool set down to the bottom. And from the bottom part here, I'm going to go back and click on Revision Table. So yours may be uh, active there already. Again, Inventor is going to keep the very last tool that you used active. So in this case, I had a revision tag placed last. Now with the revision table, the very first time we create one here, we're going to be asked a couple sets of questions here. The first one is going to be in regards to the revision table. Is that going to affect the entire drawing? or should it be just the active sheet? So if you had multiple sheets, you can have a revision number letter be different for each of the different sheets. In this case, we'll go with the drawing. So with uh, auto index, the next option, and I'm gonna go back and place that with the alpha. So with auto index, now the next revision that I place will go in is letter B. The last option here is update the property on the revision number edit. So while we go back and we're going to add in another revision, the information in this case with the iProperty information will automatically get updated. If I were to do the active sheet, the information in the sheet property would automatically get updated as well. I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And let's place in our revision table. I'm going to zoom back up on that. So now, there's nothing inside here, so what I want to do is I want to make some changes to that. So I can double click on that. So there's a couple different ways of doing this. I could just come back in here and I could type in some information. So for example, I could say 3A. And you notice when I click off that, it's in blue, telling me that it's an overridden value. So a better way to maybe do this is to actually tie this to the I property information. And that's what our first tool is going to do up here. So now from here, I can go back to the summary. And let's just place in our first one. And I'll just say change dimension. You also notice back under the project, the revision is now the letter A. So let's go ahead and click OK and close, reply. You notice in this case, it's no longer blue. And that's, that's OK. At this level I can also go back and add a revision row if I wanted to and this option right here is basically going to override the automatic update to our iProperty information in this file or not. Also from here we can go back and you can designate how this is going to be appearing the revision table that is. So I could go back to the column chooser and add or remove columns, move them around. We can go back you can sort that information. We can export it. You can do the table layout. And if you do the table layout from here, it's only going to affect this current file. In this case, I'm just going to cancel on that because we'll show you a way to do that on a global basis. And you can also go back and insert a row. If you insert a row here, it will not be held as an official revision. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now let's take a look at making the change globally. So if I wanted to go back and designate a different column or remove one, the better way to do that is going to be under the Format, pull down, click under the Standard and Style Editor. Now from the Style and Standard Editor, down near the bottom, we have a Revision Table entry. And if I click on that, this is where we can go back and make all of the changes to the revision table and the tags, how they're going to appear. So make your changes, go ahead and save that. And then if you have rights via the uh, project file, this is where then you would write that back to the style library and then you could share that with the entire team. To add another revision, I'm simply going to move my cursor over the table, right click, and add a revision row. And we can do the exact same things. And you'll notice in this case it's grabbing all the iProperty data from the last entry that we had. You'll also notice the pencil on the left hand side that is telling us which row in this case is active. So again, I'm just going to go back to the iProperties button. and. 
let's be more specific here, we'll just say half inch dimension. Click OK, and you'll see that it only changed the last revision row. It didn't do Rev A as we had before. So now let's go ahead and click OK. So the last part that we need to do is we want to go back here and I want to designate a tag. So again from the annotation panel, we'll go back under the table, under that drop list, click on revision tag. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to go back and pick a point or an edge to designate where I want that tag to go. And you'll see that it's placing in the latest revision that I had. So I'm going to place in another one over here because what I didn't do is I didn't place a tag for revision A. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll press cancel on the keyboard to cancel out of that. So I have my two revision tags, but the one on the right, I want that to be revision A. So to go back and do that, I'm just going to move my cursor over it, right click, and under the tag, this is where I can designate which revision that's going to be tied to. So it is now at revision A. You'll also notice that in the title block, revision B has automatically been updated for me as well. So one last thing that I want to point out, so when we designated the table to begin with, if I had that at the active sheet, if I right click in the browser and edit that sheet, the revision number here would be updated as well.